Makes it hard to type though. Okay, um, let's go to Canvas, which probably needs to be <clears throat> redone. Okay, so this class is P6, right? P7? Okay. P7? You need a Chromebook. What number are you? Okay, quiet, my friends. Quiet. Okay. okay, share screen. share okay so same as we've been doing we're going to go to modules okay within social studies stop with all the talking go down to tuesday and go to plymouth background okay This is the document. Let me switch screens that I'm sharing real quick. Share screen, live image. And I know it's going to take more than once to do it because it always does. Share screen again. Okay, there we go. This is the document you should have before you, the paper document. Okay. Everybody have that one? Okay. Geography and climate of Plymouth. We didn't have time yesterday to compare this, but look at Jamestown. It's a triangle. And they built their houses on the outside and some kind of buildings on the inside, right? And then here's the James River. And I'm guessing this is more of the James River out here. Yes? Look at the shape of this structure. It's different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Instead of putting the houses on the outside of the structure, they put them on the center, didn't they? Yeah. So it's as if they want to protect the houses, whereas here they're putting them along the edge, weren't they? But in both of them, they had fence, looked like quite a bit of fencing around it. What's the fencing for? Protection. From? Other animals. From Native Americans. Maybe from animals, but mostly probably from Native Americans. Well, I mean, they didn't have the best relationship with Native Americans because of the way Natives have been treated by uh, Europeans. Wow. What? Okay, so let's go back to our course modules. All right, our first article is in Plymouth Background 1. So click Plymouth Background 1. Okay. Okay. Let me get that window open a little bit. Get some air going here. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. 
pink carpet I thought. Thirty minutes. And it's raining. Okay. Unlike the soil of southern England, which is deep, nutrient rich, and easy to hand till, this no what? You're gonna miss this because you're supposed to go before school. The soil in coastal Massachusetts is sand is shallow, sandy, and stony. Who in here has been to the beach near the ocean? Sandy, yes? Yes. Do you see people commonly growing lots of crops there? No. No. They wouldn't grow in that sandy soil. The grains of sand are too large and the water pours right through it. It's not good for There's growing crops. Crabs and we're, we're, we're not talking about crabs. We're talking about crops growing through it. Okay. The soil in coastal Massachusetts is shallow, sandy, and stony, making it hard to work by hand. What did we learn about Jamestown soil yesterday? It was fertile. It's fertile. So in Massachusetts, it's shallow, sandy, and stony, making it hard to work by hand. Yes. The sandy, rocky soil had made agriculture difficult, but basic crops were grown successfully. Most of the crops grown in Plymouth were small and provided enough food to support the grower and his family. Okay, so let's switch our view. Go to Image Mate, and I'm going to zoom in. Elmo, Elmo, let's move. Source one. I don't have the source in front of me, but each one of you guys do. Source one. What did it talk about? Um, how they didn't have. What did it discuss? What resource? What about the ground? So we're talking about the soil. Soil was dry. I didn't ever hear the word dry. I did hear the word what? Sandy. Rocky. And what did it say about growing in it? Was it easy to physically manipulate? No. So what do they call it? Maybe you try to get a pencil earlier. Um, what was it? Hard to work by hand. Hard to work by hand. Okay, what else did they say? Was it easy to grow a lot of crops there? No. So how can we say that? Um, I don't want it read straight from the resource. I want it in my students' words. Your words are a lot more precious to me than theirs. Okay, so due to difficulty farming this land, they did what? They grew enough food for 
They grew enough food for their own family. So I'm going to put their own family alone. In other words, they didn't grow extra to sell. Well, obviously that would be part of the family. Well, it's just saying that it was hard for them to Find food. grow crops. Yes. Okay, so this time we're only going to do two sources together. You're going to have to write your notes on the other two. Okay. Everybody have this? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Got it all? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I do, but he's not been here for seven days. Yes. Logan's still gone. <clears throat> Put your hands down. Melanie, you write notes pretty fast. Why don't you go on down here? <laughs> All right, source two. Melanie, bring your notepad, dear. Your note packet. Or can you bring it to me, Michaela? Can you bring me her notes? Stop share. Start share. Please stop humming. Thank you. All right. Is it just me or is that kind of blurry? Yeah. Okay. Make sure it wasn't just my migraine. Okay, Plymouth Colony. It looks like they are meeting and talking about something, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know what y'all are doing with my pencils. If y'all are eating them, if you're being stitched today or what, but get your pencil. That is actually the men meeting on board the Plymouth. I'm oh, sorry, the Mayflower before they landed to plan um, the colony. Plymouth climate. Since the people aboard the Mayflower came to create a new colony, the pilgrims had to become self-sufficient, meaning they had to take care of themselves and make things work. Each family had to work hard to be able to survive. In Plymouth, the climate was very different from the one they had. Okay, it can shrink down now. From the one they were familiar with in England. The region's climate was very cool and temperate, meaning it changed. Winters were long and cold while summers were cool. It was stated by an early settler that frost and foul weather hindered us much. This time of the year, seldom could we work half of the year, half of the week. This made it very hard for the pilgrims to plant and grow seeds that they had bought, brought from England. So this time of year, you know how we get a lot of rain. It makes it hard for somebody to go out and plant stuff if it's raining half the week, right? So what the pilgrims were facing when they came was instead of rain, they had a lot of freezing weather that was coming to them. So they would have a lot of freezing weather and snow and they would have it half of every work week. That made it very hard for them to go out and plant stuff, didn't it? 
And that would also make it hard for them to build structures, buildings, homes, um, smoke houses for them to put their food. Because remember, they didn't have refrigerators. So they'd have to smoke whatever meat that they were able to get or salt it. Um, any of their buildings that they needed to build, anything they needed to do, most part had to be done outside because that's where it would be safe. And it was hard to do that because they had such bad weather. Okay, so that was different than what they had back in England. Okay, so help me word what we're going to put in our source two. The climate in Plymouth was what? Go into your source. Very different. from England. It was very, what, what? Well, they used the term cool because it wasn't like Arctic cold. Yeah. And what was the other term they used? And I defined it for you. What was the other word? I said it meant that it changed temperatures according to the seasons. Uh, temperate. Temperate. Winters were. Okay. Were. We have cool, barely cool winters. Ooh. Yeah, we do not have cold winters, barely getting snow. While summers, what does your text say? While summers, while summers are cool. We're cool. Mm -hmm. And how did that affect their growing? We're not just saying a lot. How did that affect their growing? This made it hard for the pilgrims. to grow seeds that they brought
Yes, has everybody got this done? Mm -hmm. I heard no. I know, but I heard a no. Hold on, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on somebody else. Uh oh. Okay, so bless you. Bless you. Modules, Plymouth background two. You guys always have it good. Things load up right up for this class, but they don't for second block. So here is a schematic that shows us what the shape of the bay was. Cape Cod Bay. It's like a U, isn't it? Yeah. And then the sound under it is like a, an upside down U. It is. It's like a hook. Okay. So you guys are going to have to write your own notes about source three and four. <laughs> source three is about Cape Cod Bay. The unique shape of Cape Cod Bay allows the protection of the coastline and waterways of Plymouth. The harbor was deep enough to allow the Mayflower to anchor there. So yes, that's it. Write about Cape Cod Bay. Notes. Probably not going to be able to write much. Write about Cape Cod Bay. Don't have to. There's one thing not mentioned here, but we have talked about it. That was a deep water port. Okay. We did talk about it, but it's not written right there. You need to include that in your notes. That it's a deep water port. That's why it allowed that big boat, the Mayflower, to go there. It was a deep water port. You need to talk something about protection, the harbor, 
deep enough. Pork, Mayflower. I'm sorry, Melanie. I'm sitting here holding yours. Here. I just said it again. I'm not going to say it for a third time. You're aware you're standing there saying I had just a moment ago, right? Yeah, you might not want footprints in the white part. Are we supposed to worry about If you wanted to, this is where all your accessories. Okay, let's go to our fourth source. You haven't even read the whole source yet. Timber, fish, and hunting. Okay, good. Fire drill tomorrow, good. Okay, the areas around the Plymouth colony were covered with forests. So that's something they had in common with Jamestown. When the colonists arrived in, arrived in Plymouth, they started to build their town right away. They had brought tools with them and nails and iron hardware. The land provided everything else they needed. The men went to work, went to the woods and cut down trees. They used axes to chop and trim the trees from round to square. Areas along the coast provided an abundance of seafood. Cod and whales were captured, caught in fish, and eaten by the colonists. Oil from whales were also used to fuel lanterns that provided light to the colonists during the night hours. The region around the Plymouth colony was also plentiful in furs. Colonists traded furs with the Native Americans who lived nearby. So right about that one. That's yes, it is you, okay? The rich people of Plymouth came prepared to work. They didn't bring over all the rich man, men who worked at the, or owned castles. They brought over their families and they prepared to stay. It was different than um, Jamestown. Labor.
So Jamestown was a charter granted by King James I, but it was not funded. So he allowed them to go to America, told them here, here's some land you can go to. Again, it wasn't his to give away, really. There's already people living there, but he did not give them money. Um, a private company called the London Company was the one that actually gave them the money to go. The company recruited people with promises that gold could be found by those who made the trip. So it was people wanting to make more money by going. The site they chose in Jamestown to live on was marshy and lacked safe drinking water. So that's the place we learned about yesterday. The people who went that we talked about yesterday lacked manual labor skills. They would be the ones wearing those fancy clothes like we saw a couple days ago. They depended on Native Americans for food. Is that a real wise thing? They're depending on strangers to feed them. You know, the ones that they would occasionally not be real nice to. Yeah. That's a really stupid move. Yeah, Call it for what it is, right? They, they had failed attempts to befriend natives, and that led to confrontations, aka battles. Disease and starvation killed a majority of colonists in the first year. So out of the 100 that went the first year, most of them died. Then you had the starving winter that was two years later when they had built up their numbers to 500 because more people came from England in the next couple of years. And that was after John Smith had come. And out of that 500 that were there by 1609, remember it started in 1607, out of the 500 that were there by 1609, 440 died that one winter. That was called the starving winter. Remember how we learned yesterday about the mini ice age? They had an especially tough winter. Um, not much survived, including people. 12% of people died. I mean, 12% of people survived. 88% of people died. So 440 people died. 60 people survived that one winter. 440 people is a lot of people to bury in one winter. This is 1600. Um, in 1608, this was before the starving winter, but this was after that first really bad year. Captain John Smith arrived and started the, if you don't work, you don't eat rule. Pretty smart. He opened up trade with the, um, I think it was a Narragansett crowd. He was injured and went back to England in 1609. It was that winter that was a starving winter. When he came back, he found that most of the tribe was, most of his group, his colony was dead. Um, then the next year, John Rolfe arrived in 1610 and he brought tobacco slate seeds. Nine years later, enslaved people were brought over to help farm tobacco. So that was the beginning of having enslaved people in Jamestown. It made Jamestown successful, but to the loss of the people that were brought over. Um, the first government in the United States was actually in Jamestown, House of Burgesses. Uh, with Plymouth, which is what we're learning about today, Motives for colonizing, it wasn't for bringing in money. What was it for? What was the reason for the beginning of Plymouth? Well, it's not in what we looked at today. Why did people come over on the Mayflower? They were seeking religious freedom. They had been in Holland for 13 years, but in Holland, they found it too hard to make a living. They came over to Plymouth and they found the soil very hard, but they could make enough food, or they could grow enough food to feed their own family. And that was easier than what they were facing in Holland. That means things were pretty tough in Holland, right? Um, I was ditching. Um, do, 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 do. Mayflower Compact 
That was that picture we saw of the men signing that document on the boat. It was signed by 41 of the pilgrim men. Women were not allowed to sign. Yeah, I know. Women did not get rights till hundreds of years later. Oh, what now? What? Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, no joke. Why couldn't girls sign? Yeah. So the Plymouth Colony established a peace treaty. Ooh, it's like four feet. It's power this. With the Wampanoag tribe agreed to trade for animal furs. One Wampanoag man, Squanto, had traveled to Europe and could speak some English. This is before the pilgrims came over to United to, to North America. Squanto had already been to Europe and had learned some English. He agreed to stay with the pilgrims and teach them how to survive. Switch masks if this thing doesn't pop into. Oh. Oh, your so Squanto agreed to stay with the pilgrims and teach them how to survive. He taught them how to plant corn, where to hunt and fish, how to survive through the winter. Without Squanto's help, the colony probably would not have survived. The pilgrims held a feast after their first harvest in 1621. They invited some of the local Wampanoag people to join them. This feast is sometimes called the first Thanksgiving. The first winter, um, many people got sick and died. At one point, there were only around 11 people well enough to continue working. By the end of winter, 47 of the original 100, I think 150 settlers were still alive. So two thirds of the original people that originally came over in Plymouth died. Wow. Yeah, yeah those early colonies are pretty rough. Not an easy thing. All right, has everybody finished writing their notes about Plymouth? I thought you guys might be interested in this because the slide really goes with it's kind of boring, but just the notes version is more interesting. Fourth one, source four. Your source four box. Okay, everybody should have written their four sets of notes by now. Okay, so now you have 45 minutes on your next page. Write a summary about the geography and climate of Plymouth. So you're going to write your own topic sentence. You do it every time with in Miss Daniel's class. Every single time you write your own topic sentence. She doesn't ever write topic sentences for you. You're going to write three detail sentences and a concluding sentence. Here's the other way you can write it. Go back to your modules. Click on modules. We'll see if this works. Good chance it doesn't. All right, you can click on geography and climate Plymouth. Got a link in there to a Google page, Google Docs. Oh, yay, it's not coming up here. That's fabulous, just wonderful. Yay. Oh, it's coming up slowly. Oh, fabulous. Okay, so since it's being weird, guys. Stop talking and listen to me. Since it's being weird, all this was granted last night and it's still being weird. Handwrite it. Don't worry about that. Handwrite your paragraph. It was just going to be a digital where you would type it instead of handwriting it. 
Yeah. It's going to be the same paragraph. Yeah, no, no. What's going on about the um, climate of Jamestown? You're not writing about Jamestown. You're writing about Plymouth. Guys, your paragraph is summarizing. It's telling me about the geography and the climate of Plymouth. Here's a paper. Yes, use your note. All right, so way you go back is go back to modules. Click modules. And your notes are in there. Plymouth background one, Plymouth background two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Get to writing. Walk around spot check your notes. You're not typing, you're handwriting it on your paper.
probably would have gone two days in a row. No, that gives you extra space to write your paragraph. Megan, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. I need you to um, send me a picture of all your notes. Also need a picture of your paragraph or you can use slide 24 from the um, digital format, which is at the top of the modules, slide 24, where you can type it in. <laughs> 